Tohos! There are now 15 of them, god damn! I've been wanting to rank all the town halls for a while, I just didn't know how the heck do you rank a town hall? The design? The time it takes to max? Well, I decided we're going to be ranking them based on how enjoyable I remember that town hall being. I also played a bit on a mini account and went back to the lower town halls like the lower lower ones to re-experience how that felt like because these lower town halls can be pretty forgettable since you go through them so quick. So uh. Yeah, with that being said, I understand my opinion may be different from yours, so feel free to comment down below your opinions. Anyways, let's get right into it. Let's do this. Town Hall 1, where it all starts. Other than nostalgic memories of starting the game for the first time, you immediately upgrade to Town Hall 2 within the tutorials, so you don't even get to experience Town Hall 1. It's probably for the best though, as Town Hall 1 has very little to offer. And it was purposely made that way just for the tutorial. It wouldn't be fair game for the others if I put Town Hall 1 higher, just because it's good memories. So, for obvious reasons, it's going at the very bottom. After the tutorial, you're on your own at Town Hall 2 where you can unlock three more troops, an archer tower, and walls. Even though there's much more to do, the game still feels like you're just learning and nothing significant happens at Town Hall 2. Most likely, you're getting all your loot from the single player maps, so it's a pretty forgettable experience, but obviously way better than Town Hall 1, as it's the first Town Hall where you can do whatever you please. At Town Hall 3, you unlock social features, the layout editor, the lab, and one of the most important defenses at the beginning of the game, the mortar. Also, the ability to now receive troops can be very OP. Pretty much anything high level you can get in your client castle will absolutely obliterate anything. I put Town Hall 3 in a higher tier because even though it was simple, easy, and yes, boring at times, it felt like a turning point. Like, this is where Clash of Clans starts. It didn't feel like the full experience, but it felt like the beginning of a bigger journey. Town Hall 4, you get the ability to share and download bases, you get the builder base and air attacks become possible with balloons. Honestly though, it all circles back to these lower town halls being very forgettable and sometimes boring due to the lack of army combinations and how easy it is. This town hall especially because aside from the builder base, there's not much going on. That's why it's lower than Town Hall 3. The entire time playing as a Town Hall 4 on my mini account felt like a race to move on so that I could unlock a lot more stuff at Town Hall 6. Town Hall 5 has a similar feel as Town Hall 4, except you unlock arguably more intriguing things. For example, the Wizard, the Wizard Tower, and the Lightning Spell, the first spell. That's why I'm putting it at the very beginning of D. I didn't want to go higher because even though you get more interesting stuff unlocked, things get 10 times better at the next Town Hall. Clan Capital, Clan Games, Trader Shop, The Healer, Healing Spell, Air Sweeper, and The Giant Bomb, Town Hall 6 is packed with content. Up to this point, it's the best town hall you'll be at. Of course, later on in the list, it'll get overshadowed by the higher town halls, but Town Hall 6 is genuinely really enjoyable. Sort of how Town Hall 3 felt like a turning point, Town Hall 6 feels like a new and exciting chapter. The only thing I didn't like about Town Hall 6 was the colors. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, but it's easy to overlook that. Town Hall 7 kicks it up a notch including a lot more features, the most notable ones is Dark Elixir and Season Challenges. Town Hall 7 feels like a warm up to the higher Town Hall levels. You unlock a ton of more stuff, but it's not too crazy yet and it's a fairly easy and fun town hall to be at. The amount of armies you can make starts to grow with the introduction of dragons, hogs, minions, rage, and the barbarian king especially. This is gonna be my first town hall at A tier. You'll see later that this wasn't the original ranking, but based on the ranking of some of the town halls later on, I felt that A was the best spot for town hall 7. Town Hall 8 is where attacks get even more fun, being able to, for the first time, train a proper Goite army since you unlock golems and pekkas. And on top of all of that, you unlock the Dark Spell Factory. Now, a lot of what influenced my decision for Town Hall 8 wasn't the amount of content it had, but 
how enjoyable it was to be at that town hall. Attacking was really fun. Upgrades had a nice balance between cost and time, and even today, it's super fast. And it was the first town hall that I felt like the upgrades had a meaningful change to them. This is gonna go in B tier. It's not the best in my book, but it was incredibly fun. Not too grindy, just an overall chill experience. I originally had town hall 8 at A and town hall 7 at B, but out of the two, I just found Town Hall 7 a lot more enjoyable and content filled. Town Hall 8 is more like Town Hall 7, the sequel, but that's not a bad thing. Town Hall 9. It would be hard for me to believe that someone out there hates Town Hall 9. The only possible reason are the amount of hero levels. There's a lot. But nowadays, it's less annoying with the dramatic decreases in cost and time. Other than that, I mean, it was such a fun and rewarding experience. My first time through Town Hall 9, I didn't even want to upgrade to Town Hall 10, just how aesthetically pleasing it looked. I do have a mini Town Hall 9 account that I do play on nowadays, and it's just as fun as I remember. It goes way faster, of course, but I don't see that as a negative. Content-wise, though, you unlock Expos, get one of the best heroes in the game, the Archer Queen, and to name a few things, the Witch, Lava Hound, Jump Spell, Freeze, I mean you unlock some of the most essential parts of some of the best armies in the game. This Town Hall really opens up the game even more, allowing you to try different armies and just have fun. 3 starring a Town Hall 9 as one yourself is not too difficult. It's more fun than challenging, and that's how it should be sometimes. Overall, this Town Hall had a nice balance of fun and challenge. Anyways, enough praise for Town Hall 9, it's going in S tier. I wish there were more Town Halls like this, aesthetics and enjoyment. So, Town Hall 10 was a difficult one for me to rank in terms of content. It felt similar to Town Hall 8, where the Town Hall below and above it unlocks a lot more. It's not all bad though, the Miner and the Bowler introduces you to some very nice strategies, and for the first time, attacks get a little bit more challenging thanks to the unique abilities of the Inferno Tower and extra defenses. And also, they're pretty beefy. However, a little more challenging doesn't make it annoying and hard. Town Hall 10 attacks are still incredibly fun and satisfying. And also, this is the first Town Hall where you can receive a Siege Machine in your clan castle. That can be pretty OP and helpful. Overall, Town Hall 10 is quite enjoyable, and also, it looks awesome. I think the theme gives Town Hall 10 that rewarding upgrade experience. I ended up with A tier. There's a lot of variables I considered here. Town Hall 10 was not the most fun I had in the game. That spot is reserved for S tier. And this just wasn't it. Still, it was very close. It's a very nice Town Hall to be at. I remember when Town Hall 11 came out, and it looked drastically different, and I love the additions to it. Grand Warden, Igor Artillery, and over the years they've added more stuff unlocked here, like Super Troops, Electro Dragon, Ice Golem. Town Hall 10s is where attacks started to feel more challenging, but here, at Town Hall 11, is where you start to learn some of the more complicated strategies that can take some time to learn. Also, as of right now, Town Hall 11 is the last Town Hall in my opinion, where upgrades don't feel annoying and dragged out. Obviously, this wasn't the case years ago, but the reason I'm putting Town Hall 11 so high at S tier is because other than fun challenging attacks, aesthetics, and content, Town Hall 11 aged like fine wine. It's super fun, and the balance between upgrading and attacking is just right. Town Hall 9 to 11 were the golden years of Clash, and when comparing Town Hall 10 to 11, I enjoyed 11 a little more. Town Hall 12. This is probably going to be a controversial opinion, but here we go. I think it deserves to be at B. Not a bad tier, just could have been better. In my opinion, Town Hall 12 left a lot to be desired. You only get a couple troops and siege machines. Yes, siege machines are a huge part of the game, but keep in mind you could have already gotten them before in your coin cast, so it wasn't a huge deal, just the added bonus of being able to train them yourself. As for the troops, I personally don't use the Yeti or the Headhunter, but to give Town Hall 12 some credit, the Yeti seems to be a core part of some strategies. Overall though, upgrading Town Hall 12 felt meaningless, and I couldn't wait to be done with it. The last thing I wanted to say about Town Hall 12 that has no impact on its ranking, I loved the change in theme here. Not so much the walls, but the colors and the defenses, yes, for some reason that blue, black, gray, and yellow just worked so well. 
So I just ended up maxing out Town Hall 13, so my opinion is fresh out the oven for this one. The only three significant things I cared about at Town Hall 13 was the World Champion, the Log Launcher, and the Scattershot, which already felt like a lot more than Town Hall 12. Everything else felt and looked like Town Hall 12, the sequel, <laughs> kind of like what I said for Town Hall 8. In part, that's because Town Hall 12 had little to offer, but out of the two, to me, Town Hall 13 was more enjoyable. Yes, it felt more like a continuation of Town Hall 12, but at least it was a better and more enjoyable version, and there were a lot of things to look forward to. Overall, Town Hall 13 kind of reminded me of Town Hall 10. It wasn't the most fun I had, but it was considerably better than some of the Town Halls in the lower rankings. I'd be lying if I said I hated Town Hall 13. Yes, it took a long time to max, but it gets longer the higher you go, so eventually, you just deal with it. Alright, I just got to Town Hall 14. My initial impression was there's not much you unlock, and there's some truth to that. Kind of like Town Hall 12, where there wasn't much going on, there's not a whole lot of new and exciting stuff at Town Hall 14, but it's not terrible. I consider it B tier, similar to Town Hall 12, but a little better. I haven't gotten to experience Town Hall 14 much, but I will say one thing that pretty much explains my reasoning. I'm not all that excited for this journey. I'm getting similar vibes to when I reached Town Hall 12, where I just wanted to get it over with. Also, I've heard a lot of bad about the poison bomb making attacks less fun, and the builders, they... I mean, they look cool, but it seems more like a gimmick, to be honest. The only thing I'm actually excited about are the pets, because they add an additional layer to the heroes. It's kind of like giving them a second ability, and you can choose what pet you want for that hero. Still, pets wasn't enough for me to consider bumping it up any higher. There's just not enough content, and enjoyability does not improve. However, some bonus points for Town Hall 14. I like the theme change. It was bold and out there. Even though I don't like the colors, I can appreciate the design. It'll probably grow on me like Town Hall 13 did. I didn't like Town Hall 13 at first, but it, it looks okay. Finally, Town Hall 15. So, for obvious reasons, I can't rank this Town Hall accurately. I'm nowhere near close to it, and at least for Town Hall 14, I had some friends who I could ask opinions from. But with that being said, a lot of it is gonna be speculation and just what I can see from the outside. So, as a new Town Hall 14, my goal is to finish as quick as possible so that I can enjoy some of the amazing, or what looks to be amazing, features in Town Hall 15. Town Hall 15 already looks like a better place to be, content-wise. Now, there are a couple things that I'd assume are bad. First off, your enjoyability goes way down because of ridiculous costs and times for upgrades. It's not the town hall specifically, it's just that every new town hall is like this. Also, I've heard that attacks are incredibly difficult and lack the fun they did at lower town halls. It's more about skill now rather than fun. With all that being said, I just can't put it at the same tier as Town Hall 8, 12, and 14. So, I decided at the end of A tier. A lot of the issues are a consequence of being the highest town hall in the game, and I believe over time it will go down as a fun town hall with exciting content. Maybe it won't go down in history as the next town hall 9, but I wouldn't be surprised if years from now we're comparing town hall 15 to 13 and 11. So guys, that is all 15 Town Halls ranked. Links will be down below for this exact chart if you want to make your own. And also, like I said in the beginning, feel free to discuss some of your own opinions down below. Where would you have ranked some of these Town Halls? I'm sure everyone's experience with different Town Halls is drastically different from others. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace.